What's up, y'all? Welcome to Marty P. Mornings, where I summarize a chapter from the Bible, and I'll let y'all know what I think about it. If y'all have any questions, comments, or you just want to talk, don't be afraid to leave a comment. You know what I'm saying? Pop a like. You know, you can love it if you want to. So today we're summarizing chapter 7 of 2 Kings. Let's go back. Chapter 6, Elijah's boys was like, yo, let's move. Elijah was like, all right, bet. They moved. They found out that the king of Syria... Benny was going to attack their king, king of Israel. So they told their king, go hide. Their king hid. And they came after Elisha. Elisha captured a few of the soldiers, took them back to Israel, told them to go home. Benny decided to put a blockade around Samara, the capital of Israel. There was a huge famine going around. Everybody was eating the ass heads or babies. The king found out about this firsthand, went to Elisha and was like, your God is causing all this crap. We don't believe in you. We better kill you and shut it down. We better shut it down. So this chapter, we pick off right where we left off. Elijah comes out and he's like, all right, by this time tomorrow, uh, all this stuff, everything is going to be fine. Matter of fact, it's going to be better. Flour is going to actually cost this much. You're going to be able to buy flour at a lower cost than you are now. The serpent is like, uh, I don't believe you. Even if heaven opened up, that wouldn't happen. So what we do is we cut straight to people with leprosy right so in israel right if you have leprosy you can't be inside the city you can't be inside of the city so you see people with leprosy outside of the gates of the city so that's where they at there's a few cats they're just chilling right while this whole thing's going on people are dying eating ass heads babies and stuff like that they just outside chilling like before this even happened they were exiled because of their leprosy they're sick you know what i'm saying and it's very contagious so they just keep them outside if they even go inside they immediately kill them if you still have leprosy and you go inside the gates you get killed so one of the dudes is like yo i'm tired of this uh so we got three choices okay hear me out hear me out three choices okay we could die here all right we could go inside of the gates because, you know, there's a whole war going on. We can go inside of the gates, but they're going to kill us. Or, or, hear me out, hear me out. We can go to the enemy and maybe they'll just capture us. At the very least, they'll just kill us there too. What's up? He scratched himself because, you know, he got, you know, he got leprosy. So, they was like, you know what? Yeah, let's do this. Decide to go to the other army when they get there they see nobody's there tents their horses their chariots everything is still there food gold their treasure everything but nobody's there it's like a ghost town so they're going through this stuff and hello 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 they start taking like the gold and all the valuable stuff and they start hiding it right and one of the leopards was like it wouldn't be right it wouldn't be right if we just didn't tell anybody. So what they did was they, they got as much you know, gold as they could and everything. They hid that. And then they went back and told the king, listen, listen, king, king, I know I got leprosy and everything, but there's nobody out there. King is like, what? Ain't nobody out there. There's nobody out there. So the king had a few more men and sent them out. And they went and they saw that nobody was out there. They even go past all the way back to the river of Jordan. So they go to the river of Jordan. And while they're on the way to the river of Jordan, they see clothes, like trail of clothes and all this other stuff on the ground. What happened was, remember last chapter when Elisha told his servant to close his eyes. And when he opened his eyes, he saw those, he saw that army, that army of flames and stuff. What happened was the other army, they heard that army they heard the army of flames coming for them it was so many of them that they heard them coming towards them so they dropped everything and ran off they just they they booked it didn't even see nobody they just ran gone left everything so when they found that out that's when business was booming again all of their resources you know flour hay all that stuff food is starting to come in now and they have even more the other army left all of their stuff so they have more horses more chariots more donkeys they have more gold they have a whole bunch a whole lot more than what they had before their economy is booming now so when everybody else found out about this they immediately ran towards the gate the city gates right and the person that was in charge of the city gate was the same servant that told elisha even if the windows of heaven open up we don't see that happening 
that's not gonna happen. So when everybody in the city found out about this, they ran through the gates of the city and trampled the servant and he died. That's the end of the chapter. That's the end of the story, that's the end of the chapter. So I got three points. One, you are different. There's nobody that will ever be like you. Nobody. Society, some of your friends, some of your peers, whoever, the people around you right now may not see the value in your difference. That's fine. Don't let that bother you. The only thing that's important is as long as you see the value in yourself. So accept it and use that difference to be great. The people with leprosy, right? They had a huge difference in their life. And that huge difference was the leprosy. It was bad. They were outside of the gates. Society did not accept that at all. But if they did not have leprosy, they would not have discovered that the army was gone. They would not have discovered all that gold. There are so many people in this world that feel like they don't belong where they are. And that is great, that is amazing. Because you have that difference, that difference will put you in a position to where you can do great things. Things that you never even imagined. But it's, it's customly designed and shaped for you. Point two, after accepting and utilizing your difference, you will succeed. No question about it. It's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when. You will succeed. And when you do succeed, do not, do not forget about everyone else. Now, it might be hard these people with leprosy, they were exiled. No one could talk to them, touch them. If people were coming by them, they'd have to click sticks and say, I'm unclean. I am sick and I am contagious. Nobody wanted to talk to them, make eye contact with them. Nobody wanted to touch them. Nobody wanted to be around them. You would see people walking around with handkerchiefs and, 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 and covering themselves so they won't have to like just breathe the same air as these people. But when they discovered what they discovered, they had a duty to go back and tell everybody else so it can benefit everybody else. Now, it's not because, oh, I'm the hero and I'm gonna, no. the thing about it is do this to create even greater Greatness. If these cats got a whole bunch of gold and they didn't tell anybody and they just lived out there, food would have ran out, a whole bunch of people would have died, and then they would have ended up dying. But since they told everyone else, they saved the whole city, and with the information that they had, they was able to go back into the town and talk to the king. They didn't get killed when they went back in. And now there are people that can make more food, domesticate these animals. When you capitalize, when you become successful from what makes you different, you need to enable, accept, and respect other people's differences. You need to do that from the jump, if you know yours or not. But when you find yours as well, you need to continue to accept, enable people in their differences, and encourage them. Because by doing that, you create an even greater society, atmosphere, world. You create a, a better life not just for you, but for your children, your children's children, any and everybody around you. When we all come together and we empower and encourage the people around us, even if we don't even like them, we create an environment that allows us to work together and build much more than we could have ever imagined by ourselves. The word is synergy. Synergy means that one plus one equals three. If I take this and I put this together, we could accomplish so much more than what we would be doing by ourselves or together right next to each other. If we connect, if we intertwine our talents, our differences, our abilities, we could make so much more happen than we would separate. So always encourage people. If you have accepted your difference or not, encourage people and always encourage yourself to help other people encourage others. It doesn't matter what position you're in in life. Always accept people's differences. Always enable their differences. Give them confidence in what their difference is and always respect it. Even if it's something that you don't uh, respect it. Respect that person's difference. Point three, if you cannot do 
one and or two if you have not accepted and utilized your differences yet and if you cannot respect or enable or accept anyone else's differences don't say nothing let them do their thing if somebody approaches you and says i want to be an interpretive dancer and i want to i want to be the president of the united states and i want to do that while interpretive dancing and every time i say a speech i'm going to interpretive dance that speech so everybody knows what i'm saying from here to china that's what's up let them do their thing if you don't believe in it at all don't say that you doubt them don't say anything just leave it in the bible the servant doubted elisha and elisha straight up said man so tomorrow when it does happen you're gonna see that it happens and immediately after you're not gonna be able to eat the flour that's at a lower price that it happened exactly the, the way that Elijah said it was and then the man died at the end of the day you gonna be looking mad stupid and all you had to do was just shut up what really is sticking in my head right now is Meek Mills right and Rico with Drake he said for the teachers who said I won't make it here I spend a day what you make a year and that's exactly what it is don't try to bring them down because at the end of the day you're gonna look stupid all i'm saying is if you doubt somebody don't try to bring them down with you or don't try to make them feel worse than how you feel my mom said if you can't say nothing nice don't say nothing at all so just let it be and enjoy like everybody else in this room and that's all i got for you today uh yeah so um one accept your differences and use them you will become successful two never forget about the people that helped you, the people that believed in you, and the people that doubted you. Don't forget about everybody else because you can take your talent and help other people reach their talent so you can make everybody reach something even greater than you even imagine. Three, if you can't do one and two, then shut the fuck up! Ah! 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 <laughs> That's all I got for you today. For my teachers that said I won't make it here, Spend a day what you make a year I had to drop this to make it clear That I got it lot like Jamaican here All these shoppers popping niggas wild and violence Why we even gotta take it here? Why we even gotta play these games? Run up on me, catch a face, you there The chasers, what you thought? We might just get hit with the reaper We might just get hit with the reaper